Now we'll get back on the stuff you can get <laughs> We had a deer I've been watching for a while, or, you know, managing for a while, whatever you want to say. Uh, out here, once they hit a certain age, they start traveling a lot more. Oh, and yeah. You hit that certain age, start traveling to the neighbors. The neighbors whack that son of a bitch. Or get hit by a car. Or, you know. I, I guess I finally understand what white tail hunters go through because I'm just like motherfucker. Yeah, and it wasn't because I wanted to kill it because I don't. You know, it take a huge ass. And this is what I was trying to explain to my dad and my brother the other day. It take a huge ass deer to get me excited. Like I, I have. You know what I feel? I feel good about my shot, and I feel good that we got meat for the goddamn freezer. Yeah, because uh, I'd rather shoot shitheads and does. Yeah, unless it was just probably something I would never see out here, never be able to grow out here. Uh, but it, it was a good deer. He really needed another year. You know, I'm gonna get all fancy with it. Right. Yeah. But the fact that this fucker just roamed over there during rut and some. And Joe Bob kills him the next day. Yeah, I, yeah, I get it too. I'm just like, God yeah. If you've been damn. feeding a thumb gun out, put five hundred dollars worth of protein feed out for yes. that thumb gun all day. Oh, man. oh I guarantee. Yeah. I, I was, I was like, when you know, because the other guy's showing me, I'm like, well, tell that son of a bitch he's welcome. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna send him a feed bill up there yeah. from the feed store. <laughs> yeah, because it was a damn good deer. Uh, it was. It was our first damn good deer, like damn good deer. Uh, it was just really heartbreaking that someone else got to shoot some bitch, but that's low fence. Oh, that's, that's you know, what, what are you going to do? That's the way it is. Yeah, I'm not a, I don't get real excited about that deer. I'll tell you how excited I was. I shot a 170 one day. Uh, I'm checking yearlings horseback and I see this year or this big deer over there and I get on my horse and I walk out there and I go look at that deer and, uh, uh, well, the wind was, I wasn't even dreaming of, of shooting the deer, but mm-hmm. I just wanted to get close enough so I could see how big he was. Well, I got there and I could tell he was a big old deer, but the wind was wrong. He went to me and he left, went back into the neighbors, into the heavy brush, was wheat over here. I left, went into holiday at the all sorts, got two bean burritos and a big red, come back, rode my horse out there to, oh, there was a little old grass knoll where some tumbleweeds was, mm-hmm. tied my horse to the tree. Ate my two bean burritos, <laughs> drank my big red, and fell asleep. And I'm sleeping there in the middle of them daggum uh, tumbleweeds. And uh, and then about an hour later, I wake up and get to sleep out of my eyes. I look up there, and there he is with a bunch of does. Well, I look, at him, he's about 200, I think 225 yards. And I, I call my buddy Mitch. And I, and I could tell he's big, but I didn't know how big, you know. And that's, you know, you're always worried about ground shrinkage. And I'm not a big deer guy. So I called my buddy Mitch. I said, hey, Mitch, and big old deer over here. He said, well, shoot him. I said, well, I don't think he's as big as that deer I seen, you know, the other day. And he goes, uh, and da, da, da. And anyway, we go back and forth on him. And, uh, and, and I said, well, I don't want to shoot him because if that other one, he goes, well, where are you at? Well, then where I was at, I remembered, hell, I'm in Wichita County. I'm about 100 yards over into Wichita County. I said, oh, hell, hang yeah. on. I said, you know, you can kill one in Wichita and one in Archer. I said, hang on a sec. So I, I shoot that old deer, and uh, I shot, and it was windy, about 20-mile-an-hour wind, and I shot, and everybody, all the does leave, and he kind of bucks around and looks around like he didn't even shoot him. And I go, holy shit, and I still got Mitch on the speakerphone. I said, well, kiss my ass. I said, that's something good. I must have missed him. He goes, really? And I said, what do you shoot with? I said, my 250. And he goes, no way. I said, yeah. And I said, hang on a second. I said, I'll show you shoot him again. So I go to put another one in, and I go, click. I said, well, kiss my ass. I ain't even got no more goddamn bullets. <laughs> he said, he's laughing at me. You ain't got no bullets? I said, yeah, I'm sitting here, and he got this big old deer. He just sitting there, and he's just, and by that time, he's just kind of walking off a little bit. And, uh, and I said, hang on a sec. And uh, I got a bad habit of short action. And yeah. so I didn't bring back enough to pick up that shell. I knew I had shells in it. So I said, oh, hang on a sec. So I'm, I gave him on speakerphone the whole damn time. And I get that booger on there, and I stand up. And I boom, and I shot him. He went over there, jumped across the fence in the trap, fell over dead. 
whole time I was worried about the uh, ground shrinkage, and hell, he actually got bigger because I thought mm-hmm. he was 10, he was 13 pointer, had a mainframe come in on the inside, left, but hell, I. Yeah, I don't get real excited. We're sitting there. I don't know if I'm kill this day. Score. Yeah. Well, he actually scored one sixty nine and seven eight. And I, yeah. the old boy that scored him, I said, "Come on, give me one seventy. <laughs> no, he is what he is. Yeah, of course. But he's nice, dear. I get, I get more excited about long range hunting, um, especially the white tail. This is my other thing. I was telling Dad and them because they're like, "Why do you always want to shoot them for?" And I'm like, "Modern cartridges, calibers, optics, everything else. It, there just ain't nothing in it for me up close." Yeah. Uh, and the other day, <laughs> when I shot that one at long range, we don't have stand over there, and yeah. it's very open. You have to. How far is long range? How far did you shoot him? You remember what it was? Fifty. Uh, Six? Seven sixty-eight. Yeah. 758. Yep, that's long range. So I didn't realize just how many people would send me dirty messages about that shit. And I'm just like you didn't is, know the fucking like they don't they that's don't, not real hunting. And yeah. I'm just like it felt like real hunting. <laughs> I you, was out there freezing my fucking ass off. Yeah. <laughs> because there ain't no like I said, there ain't no stand and uh what I always do this particular, it's like a little honey hole. Uh, I just walk in from way out and literally lay prone, right. no matter what the weather is, and I just wait. And uh, that morning, he nothing showed up. It's you know because it was during the full moon; they literally weren't there in the mornings. So I leave, go back to my vehicle, which is parked about a mile away. I get over there and watch the coyote forever, shoot the coyote at uh like three ninety eight or something like that. Fun times, I'm like, yeah, fuck the deer. The coyote, you know. It was uh, actually one of the biggest males I've ever killed on this whole ranch, which is just under 40 pounds. Yeah, I'll be damn. Big old scruffy male for out here. Uh, damn big for out here. So I was just about to go back to the house and meet Fitzy for a podcast. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go check the honey hole one nice time. So go back over there, and he was there. Uh, this one super old buck, been chasing for a long time. He's actually on downhill side. Close as I can get was that range. And I'm, just, you know, I know my capabilities. I practice a shitload. And that's what I guess these people don't understand. Uh, shot it, ran 20 yards, killed over dead. And then, like, the, you know, like I said, overwhelming majority of the comments was good. But I got these messages from these random people. I don't fuck oh, which I, I don't care. Because my answer is always the same. Sure feels like hunting. I am now eating this son of a bitch. I don't what, just because I can shoot further than you. What? what Welcome to it, social media. What, exactly. Because yeah, I guarantee you, uh, <laughs> if you'd have shot him at ten yards, yes. it would have been a hundred people. Well, God dang, that's yeah. a, that's a skill. Hey, for the record, before I go back, I didn't miss that uh, deer. Uh, I, I had shot him the wind. I didn't adjust, and I had shot him back. So I yeah. didn't miss the deer the first time. But I had <laughs> shot him back, and uh, he had buckled. Yeah, yeah. Get that clarified. I didn't miss it. Somebody. And I shot him the second time, and it really got him. But, but yeah, that, that guy, you know, you may have seen my Facebook yeah. while, the other day, but talking about that. I mean, on, on them, de- like say, y'all's uh, – TBH is the only one, only one that I stayed in after that. I got to watching some of the stupid, I mean, the most ridiculous information. And I know people trying to help. Yeah. But I mean, I was like, there's no way that some of these people believe some of these, these <laughs> deals. I said, how can you? I mean, they were just so idiotic. And then there was other guys going, man, I appreciate the information. I'm going, are you, you, you really believe that? I yeah. mean, so it's kind of scary guy, sometimes. And, and, you know, and the other deal on a bunch of them deals is, you know, you take a guy that don't know nothing, you don't know jack shit about cow. He's on there to learn, mm-hmm. right? So he asks a question. And that question may have been asked a million damn times. But it didn't matter. I said, the only qu- stupid question is a question that wasn't asked. Yep. And instead of, you know, guys, they go, hey, God dang you, dumbass. Won't you search that back in and yeah. go back? Or they'll go, God, if you if you don't know that, you don't need to be hunting. Right. And that shit just goes all over yep. me. Yeah, I know. That's so, why I said, hey. 
But a poor old guy, they didn't have a chance. I said, they, well, they don't know whether the good guys from the bad guys, yep. and you mix them all together, and it makes a terrible potion. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is the that is the tough part about social media. Is yeah, that shit right there. You know, December got here, and a uh, uh, a guy asked on there one. Or I don't even remember what it was. Hey, what's better, call, uh, a light, Cow Canyon or 66 LXR? And I said, which I got both, and I got both of them, and I love this, the LXR. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't like the Canyon because it weighs 80 pounds. Yeah. And, of course, I, about two months after I got it, some going to quit working. But it didn't bother me. I got a 1,000 lights. I, I bought them to try them out. Yeah. God almighty, Jason Brooks likes <laughs> They, somebody called me and told me, he was, did you see what Jason Brooks put on? I said, no. He said, well, he had a live podcast uh, down in you for down in his deal. I said, all I did was that answer the guy's question. And, and and what was bad, before I learned this, Jason sent me a, a, a deal to fix my life. Yeah. And uh, I ain't never even looked at it, but he sent me a box. to, And so I put a long post over there. You know, talking, hey, thanks, Jason. He fixed my daggum light, you know, da, 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 and all that. And then somebody seen that deal. And he goes, Boy, I don't know why you're uh, uh, lauding, uh, applauding uh, Jason. I said, he he run you through the ringer on, on this. I said, what? He said, yeah, go watch this. I said, no, I ain't got no time to watch it. Yeah. But, well, I did delete my post after that, though. And God dang. I said, if you're going to be a, a company owner, you got to have some pretty thick skin. You yeah, damn sure about <laughs> it. Something as little as that yeah. stirs you up. Ah, yeah. He didn't. He didn't say nothing about the '66 LXR, which is, is what I said I used over yeah. on other lights. Ugh. Yeah, you better have some thin skin if you're going to have business in this game. Well, that, this that, that, age that, that retired me from Facebook for all of December. <laughs> I said, "Are you kidding me?" I'm, I noticed I'm, you got real quiet. There. Well, I, I I got off of it. I was going to take a hiatus for about a week, and then I got to where I liked it. And then so, and if I tell you what, if it wasn't for you know, January, February, March, you yep. got to keep up with all the hunts. And so I'll get on. But I guarantee you, about April 1st, it's probably going to go back off. Yeah. yeah. I, I envy you. Yes, <laughs> it, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it was get, pretty relaxing. Kelly goes, my wife, she goes, you're going to get back in? I ain't missed it a lick. Not yeah. a lick. Yeah. I guarantee you. Yeah, I but can't. everybody thought I died. I kept getting, <laughs> you know, I kept messenger yeah. on. Hey, everything all right? Yeah. I guess they thought I put a gun to my head because Jason Brooks was down on him. <laughs> oh, he claimed you're going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed, um, we actually did a 12 minute talk about it. I don't want to come out. Um, it's really me just making light of the situation. Now that the freak, is it how you pronounce it? Freak? If, if or EQ, the new Burnham Brothers call. Oh, yeah. Um, now this come out and see like you remember how shit was uh, let's say seven to ten years ago seven yeah seven ten years ago when all the new e callers start coming out and yeah. all the e call wars oh yeah then the light wars came on now it comes in again the I haven't really been paying attention this week and uh, it could still be going on but there's so many freaking people arguing about that shit uh, oh really the, the whether or not it actually works and uh, actually. Some of the Fox Pro guys got in there and was like being pretty brash about it. I got the only reason why I know about it was because I got mentioned yeah. about it. And I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they're mad about it. I don't care. Yeah, somebody <laughs> was telling me about it and I and I heard all about it too. And uh I don't, what was it on? What, one of the groups. They tried to someone uh posted about it at TPH and they tried to start up in there. I went to there and deleted all the shit. You know, we don't Yeah. I'm like, yeah. we'll I love to hear thoughts and opinions. A little debate, as long as you keep it. But this simple. like childish bullshit. Delete. <laughs> Get rid of all of oh. it. I'm not going to play the name name calling game and bash and everything else. But I want to say whatever one of the other groups like they just you know a lot of them just oh, let yeah. go and why 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 yeah and it's a. Uh, it was again. I'm just like, man, this feels like seven to ten years ago all over again. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, people. Yeah, like, when Lucky Duck started coming out, you know, it was yeah. that. it's always, it's always a piss contest. And I, I'm like, hey, boys, all of our, you know, our dicks may not be the same size, but piss still comes out at some bit. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and uh, it, that's what I always like tell Ford, people. Ford and Chevys. Yeah. He likes Ford. Drive the Ford. It'll still get you to all. Yeah. And same with the Chevy. And uh, 
God, everything's got to be so daggum dramatic and, and bad. And, <laughs> and yes. you know, Lucky Duck's going to sell Lucky Duck. And Fox Bro's going to sell Fox Bro. And Gary's going to sell his. And yeah, uh, I don't understand why people get so oh, but tied like, up in the e-calls. Uh, you haven't really, you've kind of seen it, but you haven't really seen it on thermals quite like you did the e-calls, and especially when the lights came close. on. Not even close. The, the, as far the only thing I see on thermal is just like if you have an ATN, people shit on you. That's about it. Like there, there wasn't. It was nothing like the e call wars and the the light wars. You know yeah. when they first come on. Oh yeah, all them lights coming out and all the people bickering. Like I don't know. Thermals were kind of the. I fi- I figured it was going to come, but it's. I guess people just don't care. I guess I there's, there's so many of them. You yes. know, there's so many different kinds. Hell, you can't. It's hard to make. Yeah, there's you know. definitely a lot of gosh dang thermals nowadays. Oh, Lord, That's for damn sure. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, you know, I started helping that uh, old Southern Precision Outdoors, mm-hmm. helping them sell them some. And, and, uh, and they're, you know, everybody's, well, what about this? What about, well, yeah. <laughs> 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 You're talking to about the most illiterate thermal yeah. guy. I said, I got a Trigicon, I got a Pulsar, and I got a uh, uh, an IRA. Mm-hmm. But the Pulsar and the Trigicon, so they're old. You know, yeah. once they're uh, been out two years, they're ancient. You know? Yes, that's old technology. Yeah. That's what I hate about thermals. <laughs> mine are like 10 years old. So, yeah. and, uh, and so, but hell, uh, so I, I give them the best answer I can, but then I call Shane or Southern. Hey, uh, what's uh, what's this caller <laughs> yeah. here? Trying to got to try to get a that's little a bit t- more. That's a game. very tough game to play in, and we we have tons of people always asking us about thermals. I'm just like wrong guy. Yeah, my shit's old now. Uh, I do have a newer one, but it's two years old now, and that's probably old news by now. And that's a I already have enough uh, expensive hobbies. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't need another one that's like. Oh, I tell you what. As long as my, my shit's working, I'm keeping it. <laughs> my buddy's, uh, um, my buddy, his boy's just getting into the uh, deal. He was talking to me the other day. I said, Landon, I'm going to tell you, son, cocaine's cheaper. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I said, hey, cocaine's yep. cheaper. If you want to have it, go get on the cocaine. Cause I they, guarantee they you. On. Yeah. Yeah. I can. Of course, you know, the good thing about it, it, when you go through the cocaine, it's over. I, said, I can always sell my thermal <laughs> yeah. guns. That's why my wife, she's kind of like, oh, that's kind of money in the bank until I tear that shit up. <laughs> I, I took that old man out the other day, uh, uh, calling gas money Fisher. Do you know John Fisher? You might take him out, but old John boy. I he, don't know. He goes out with Jeremy Harrison, and but I call him gas money because, uh, Years ago, you know, I'm not a big guide. You know, I don't, I'm not real into taking guys out hunting. Uh, but he's one of them good guys you don't mind taking. And I took him out like 15 years ago. He's like, and I turned him down the first time. And then I called him back up and I said, Hey, John, uh, John uh, I said, it just so happens I'm broker in Ten Commandments right now, so I'm going to take you hunting. And uh, he said, all right. He said, uh, I need some gas money. And so after that, <laughs> he we called himself. Call, hey, you get broke, call old gas money, yeah. Fisher, we're going. I took him a while back. And I'm going to tell you, that some bitch is tough. That some guy, we get out there and we, we, we'd make a call. Well, of course, he's shooting a gun that ain't suppressed. And after, you know, shooting a gun with suppressed, it's like Benton Bowman said, anybody that shoots on press is uncivilized. Yep. And it's the gospel. Yep. Well, he's got this 243, short barrel 243, and he shoots at that first cow, and my ears are still ringing because of it. <laughs> God, Lord, they thought, thought. And I mean, I said, John, uh, can you use my gun? We use my gun. I said, try this thermal line. Try this thermal line. So, boy, sure enough, he kills one. We got a. Uh, uh, a four pack coming in, and I said, All right, get him. Boom, he shoots one, he shoots another one, then one hangs up there, 350, boom, he shoots it. And then we go to the next stand, and that's when I tore my Trigicon up. I left it, and it fell off the deal. And so went, and he called, and he called, well, he, he got to missing, and he missed another one. He missed, and he, he said, Man, if I use my gun, I said, John, it ain't the gun. He just need to, <laughs> you need to ease up, you know, da da da. Anyway, we went on, and he had a few misses, and, and uh, he wound up killing Well, then the next morning, I go down there to eat breakfast with him. 
and a God Almighty. He's got a black eye and a God dang <laughs> two, yeah. two rings around where he'd scope eye. Well, I had forgotten. I don't like shooting with the yeah, uh, eye either. cup either, yeah. so I take it off. Well, he wasn't used to it, and yeah. that son of a gun had scope at him on that first one. And he, I go, God dang, John, why didn't you tell me? He goes, well, I, I, I. I just didn't want to, you know, you wanted me to use a gun. And I said, well, no wonder you was missing. Yeah, it was getting kind of hard to see through the blood. <laughs> I was like, you tough old son. I mean, it gashed him yeah. twice on there. That's what Tim did, Tim Spike did when he was out here with the trench car. Yeah. Because oh, <laughs> I don't run the boots either. Yeah, I don't either. And uh, I, wa- I was watching him when it happened. I'm like, oh, you're going to regret that. <laughs> Yeah, I I just forgot all about it. Didn't even tell it. So, uh, yeah, as far as especially guiding predators, anybody that guides coyote hunting, especially like fox country, it was different. Like it's fox country. Yeah, cat hunting, I can you know I could get get behind the guiding cat hunts. I wouldn't offer a bunch. I just offer one. You know, but coyote hunting that's a different story because you're like every time one gets by, you're just like, <laughs> oh yeah, well and. To me, my time's valuable. Your time's valuable. You're not. It, you can't charge enough to make it worth it to you. You you better be doing it. Which I don't know what other people charge to guide cow hunts. I would assume. I would hope it's worth their while. Because like to me, like I'm looking at it from like a standpoint. Like we're using my vehicle, my rifles. Because if they ain't shooting suppress, I wouldn't allow it. <laughs> oh yeah, you're using one of my things. Well, that's all the time and everything if I else. It anymore, it's going to be a, that's going to be a golden rule because I wasn't even thinking about it. It's been so long <laughs> since I had shot with a guy that wasn't yeah. suppressed. And when that son bitch went off, I guarantee you, I like to piss down both legs. <laughs> Holy I just, shit. Nowadays, but, I just don't. <sighs> but yeah, the miss is one thing. But then on the other thought, you know, they we get aggravated on that part. Well, then they get aggravated. When yeah. you can't put them on coyote. Yeah. And that's the deal. You know how fickle coyote hunting yep. is. You know, you may go three days and never see a guy yeah. named coyote. And, and everybody thinks, well, you killed 430 yeah. cows. Yeah. You got a coyote under every tree. Yeah, that, you can go out any time yeah, get on top anytime. of them. <laughs> you don't realize how many <laughs> yeah. times I went out 12 hours and to get one coyote. And, yeah, because somebody asked me that, you know, he said, I said, listen. I said, it's just like this. I said, when a guy scores a touchdown – He's going to dance in the end zone. Mm-hmm. When you fumble or you throw an interception, he's not going to the house and bragging about that. <laughs> exactly. I said, so there's a lot of them negative days. I promise yeah. you there yeah. is. Uh, yeah. Anybody who's being honest, anybody Kyle hunts a lot being honest, they'll they'll yeah. tell you the truth. Like, yeah. It good. ain't always winning. I don't uh, care how fresh your land is and all that stuff. It ain't always win. Way more negative days than there are positive days. I can guarantee you that. But yep. that's why we keep going yep. for that one yep. it's day. It's like a drug. Like yep. It's it's kind of like my buddy. He goes there every time we go golf. Mm-hmm. Old Dwayne, we call him the shrub. He's about that tall. His family tree was a shrub. And uh, the old shrub will go punt. Every time he goes to make a putt, he'll say, this one's in the hole. And he'll go and he'll miss. <laughs> And he'll do that like 30 times. And then that one time, yeah, it makes he it. He called it. I told you it was in the hole. I told you it was in the hole. Yeah. Yeah. That's coyote kind of hunting summed up right you there, I guarantee you. Right. But, but, you know, you were talking about that, going back to that deer hunting a while ago. Uh, I'll tell you, funny. Uh, I've always kind of had a fascination like most outdoor men with mountain men. You know, mm-hmm. the old mountain. Jeremiah Johnson, my favorite show yeah. in the world. So I've always wanted me a 50 cow hawking rifle by God. Well, my farmer <laughs> that does my farm, it turns out he's been going to him since he was born. Him and his daddy and his family. And, and I've no shit. And he said, uh, he goes, yeah, matter of fact, we're going to one next weekend. I said, really? Where's it at? And he goes, Chickasha, Oklahoma. I said, listen, if I'm going to a mountain man running through, it ain't going to be in Chickasha, <laughs> Oklahoma. It's going to be in the mountains. And, uh, so, but anyway, he wound up buying me, uh, a 50 cow hawking rifle brought to my house. And I was, man, I appreciate it, man. It's a cool old stick. And uh, well, then a week or two goes by, and he goes, hey, you shot that rifle? Right Not until I get some instruction on this son of a bitch. I ain't, <laughs> yeah. ain't going to look like no bug bunny cartoon. Yeah. You know, my old face blowed up. <laughs> they come by there one day, and we loaded it, and boom, and we shot it, and he did all that. I thought, all right, good deal. Now I'm ready to kill something with it. So I, I go out one day, and uh, I'm going to go rattle some deer. And I get out there, and 
got a dog, and I rattle up big old weight point. All right. I got him in my sights and went. <laughs> Primer went off, but my powder didn't go off. Yeah. Remember, like old, the old man said, keep your powder dry. Yeah. Apparently, I didn't keep my powder dry. <laughs> and so the, the deer goes off, and I stomp back, Bill, and I was mad. And they had to get it cleaned out for me and all that. Got more shrooms. So I finally get all that fixed, and I go out another time, and I'm walking west of my house, and I get over through there, and I'll be, God dang, out of nowhere, here comes five cows. And they just walk, and I'm in thick, heavy bro. And they all walk right up to me, and they just standing around me. Oh, shit. Boy, I'm putting, <laughs> putting my damn gum deal in there and got my powder in there, and I just about got it all shoved down in there, and they all run off. And I, Well, I said, hell with it. I, first, I tried to call them back, and then I made a rattle. Didn't get nothing. And I'm walking to the next spot to go rattle. And it's windy, pretty windy, but I'm in thick, bro. And I walk in up on a group of hogs, and I get about 15 yards from this big old sow. Said, all right, me and old Hawk and Jeremiah's fix to get bloody. And I rolled that burger up there and I, boom. And I guarantee you, I could see that bull, that ball, hit the side of that daggum hog and bounce off and the hog run off like, <laughs> looking at me like, what the hell was that all about? And I went, oh boy, now I am mad. So I stomp back to the house and I call old old buddy James. Hey. Don't think I shot this daggum hog for like 15 yards and the damn bullet bounced off of some gun. He went out there and laughed at me. He said, really? I said, well, how much powder did you put in? Well, 40 grains, just like you told me to. <laughs> well, hell, we were shooting a target, son. Yeah. He said, you did about 80 or 90. Well, God yeah. almighty, I'm glad it wasn't no 14-point buck, you know. Yeah. So I still ain't got bloody with the deal, but I'm going to kill a child <laughs> with that son gun. Oh, man, I was... Which I was, I was looking into those this last year for my brother because he was thinking about you know yeah another hunting season basically what he was looking for. My initial response then was like this ain't for you. <laughs> it's like he's not technical whatsoever. Oh, like he's oh, just yeah. like bullets going gun pull the trigger gun goes boom. Like he's one of those kind of people and uh i'm like this requires way too mate too much maintenance and everything else but now they make them to where it's damn near like a gun uh i think it's federal's making literally everything's within a cartridge almost looks like a shotgun chip really? you load that in then you just drop the bullet in and it's separated oh no 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 no, no. that's not the way i want i want the old like the old oh, matter of fact and, and i was going to do the flint Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, he said, eh, you want to start the percussion first, <laughs> you know, then work your way to the flint because you'll get some goddamn magic. And, yeah. You know, sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. But I, don't know. But, I think it'd be cool, but at the same time, it's like, oh, my God, that's a. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, a it's a novelty for damn yes. sure. I don't want to make a living out because, like I say, I done went out twice. I, now I'm at, the, I, by this time, I'm in the creek trying to catch a uh, deal because my family's starving. <laughs> yeah, we ain't, we ain't brought home meat yet. Yeah. So. I'd rather go, well, well, I might be skewed because I used to, lot, back in the day, I shot a lot of bow. I'd rather have a bow than a musket or whatever they call those. Uh, I dance for me. No bow. I don't want no bow. Oh, I don't. God dang Indians are eating government cheese because of them <laughs> damn bow. I, I, I don't. I, don't, I hate bow. Yeah, because, you know, I told you that story about shooting that deer and the, the arrow <laughs> still stuck in that some gun we're running around. So I can take a hint. But, but I'll tell you what, you know, I entered yeah. that, uh, I got in that, you know, I've been trying to win that Nevada shotgun only hunt mm -hmm. up there for like three or four years. And, I've had shit luck. One day, we forgot permission to slip on a really good property, and then the next year, <laughs> my buddy didn't tell me that they helicoptered it for three weeks straight. Yeah. And so anyway, I've got my ass kicked, and I don't like to get my ass kicked. Well, <laughs> then finally, old uh, Rusty Gamble, who's a Fox Pro guy, he calls me up and he said, "Hey man, you come up here and hunt with me. My God, you don't threaten me with a good time." So we hunted it this year, and. uh but I was, you know, my favorite shotgun shell is Remington uh, number four buck. Well, they're like unicorn pills. Yeah. You can't find the son of a bitch. So I posted on Facebook and said, hey, anybody got any number four buck or shotgun shells? And well, my buddy Scott Hutchins, he goes, hey, I got some of them, but I got something better. And I said, ain't nothing better than Remington. Well, there he is. 
and it's called a goddamn um, apex predator. Yeah. Oh my god! And he, got, I get over there and he says, uh, he said he's right here. He said, man, this is what I shot that cow at like eighty eight yard. Da da da. I said, oh now. Yeah. And he goes, now there's the downfall is they're high. I said, how high? He was like ten dollars a shell. What? I said, that <laughs> some bitch better come with a twelve pack of blowjobs for goddamn ten dollars a. A shell? I said, are you kidding me? He goes, well, they're actually higher. They're like fifteen ninety nine five. Yeah. He said, but they're worth it. So he gave me five boxes of them and then some of them deals. Well, the first cow come in on me and old Rusty, first stand of the morning. Well, I'm watching downwind side. Rusty's looking this side, and this cow come in out of the sage. Everything's sage. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, hand-to-hand combat. Yeah. Matter of fact, the first cow that I killed out there, Rusty went one way, and I made. we were scouting, just jacking around. I'm sitting on my chair. And, I mean, you can't see any farther. You know, there's just trails in that deal. Sage that high. And I ain't calling. And I barely got my hands down. This cow comes running around the deal fast, runs into my leg, knocks my leg out from under me, but it assholes him. And I, I labeled get my shell, and I shot that son got <laughs> five yards at my daggum feet. And I thought, oh, okay, that's how we're gonna run this. Yeah. Day. But anyway, that uh, that first cow come in right behind Rusty, you know, about twenty yards, and boom, I shoot him seventy five yard rolling. Of course, he kind of flopped. Boom, I'm at that old uh, zombie double tap method, you know. I'll oh yeah. Sure. Yep. So I boom, I shoot him three times, and then I go, God damn, <laughs> that's a thirty dollar goddamn yep. cow. I forgot. Yep. Him. So after that, I put the ten dollar in the yep. tie, and I put them two dollars back behind me. Oh yeah, but uh, hell, I shot one at uh, one hundred five yards, and shot four at eighty yards. I mean, that's some bitch is deadly. That one I shot out there at like one hundred five yards. He come up downwind, and he stood up on the deal, and all, all I could see was his head. Boom, shot his ass. But yeah, that if you're gonna get in a shotgun hunt, man, that apex predator yeah. is it was just two shot, but they say that uh that twos and forward mix is really the load. Yeah. I'm fixing to get me a bunch of it because uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can put a thermal on my damn shotgun. On my shotgun. Yeah. I guess I could just I was looking at my shotgun and it's got four holes and I wondered if that wasn't for what, a rail. What shotgun do you have? Huh? Stoger. Stoger. They make rails for that, don't they, Fence? Stoger? I think so. I th- they should. If, I it, think, if it's tamped, I, they don't I, have it. Yeah, I think it's got two, you know, four holes. You know, it looked like it yeah. had, and I bet it was. I'm sure there's a rail out there for but it. boy, you know, it'd be a game changer. Them old cows let them come in. <laughs> you know, because with thermal and total darkness, the hamburgers get all over you. And, uh, well, you know how hard it is, you know, right. coyote in close on you right on there. On the thermal. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you can shoot three or four of them some guns real fast before they get out of range and let the shot rifle go. Yeah. But sound like plan. We're gonna try it. I uh, the only downside of that is which most of them nowadays should be able to handle it, but uh, I'd be sure and check into your thermal. Someone will handle that twelve gauge recoil. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. The electronics and shit. Yeah. Definitely, I would definitely look into it. <laughs> it's, huh. It would suck to <laughs> yeah to chew up a high dollar thermal. And you know, it should be a thing in the past, but I don't know. I, again, I don't yeah. follow thermals worth of shit. Yeah, that may be that may be interesting. Be a, if you have a good warranty, I'd throw it on there and try it. Hell, I got that. I got that pulsar that hell. Yeah. It's nineteen million years old anyway. I <laughs> test it out on yeah. it. I don't think you can tear that some bitch up. It's it's been through the ringer. I have dropped it. I have drug it. I'm, that's been a pretty good. Uh, well, I say it's mine. It's old Benton. Benton, he's one of my uh, sponsors, I guess you could say, because he comes down and hunts with me and leaves all his shit there. So yeah. I got all – hell, I got two of his vehicles. He drove – he got uh, – you know, he's got a contract. He mows a bunch of the uh, highways up there in Virginia. Well, he rolls in from Virginia with this orange truck, and I mean like – <laughs> orange and uh hell he just left it there and you know hell out there two years and i said hell i'm gonna start this up and drive it hell yeah drive that son hell that that hunting wagon it was out there in, in the woods in yeah. new mexico for like three years and he forgot all about it <laughs> yeah so that's what i say i need about 10 more friends just like him yeah <laughs> that'd be all right yeah hell yeah but uh so but now that that shotgun hunt it was a cool deal Boy, do you do you prefer 
daytime over nighttime or nighttime over daytime? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really say I had a a preference. I really don't. I mean, it doesn't. You know, it depends on the feel. You know, some nights mm-hmm. I love going all night, and but uh, no, I really, I really couldn't say I liked either one even even more. I like right. both, but uh, I like the daytime because you're not nearly as tired. But I don't ever sleep, so right. nighttime ain't that bad anyway. Right. I don't like nightline from seven to ten. <laughs> You're right. I'm getting up at ten. Yeah, yeah. That's when when the sun goes down. Is usually when I go down. But but I don't give a shit who you are with the thermal game. Uh, you know, used to. If you ever seen anybody with a killed thirty cows, it was something. Right. Nowadays, everybody kills thirty in a yeah. Night. Yeah. yeah, you know, it ain't it ain't no big deal. So anybody that says thermal doesn't up your game, they're liars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So does it make that big a difference? Well duh. I said look on Facebook and see how many goddamn thirty piles you see. Yeah. You know, every night somebody's killing thirty. Yeah, you know, it ain't no big deal. Yeah. So I'm assuming you would much much rather run thermals than lights nowadays. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean just out of ease. Oh, uh, well, it's just better. Right. I mean, you don't have the, yeah, you, you, you know, it's just, I don't give a shit who you are. It's better. With with thermal and suppressors, the yeah. coyotes, they're in trouble now. Right. Yeah, cause, because, you know, used to, you'd shoot one and that big boom, their ears are ringing, they're getting a grab ass gone too. And, uh, but now, shit, you can shoot one and he'll come back, shoot another one, shoot another well, like that night, I killed them eight, you know. I killed three, and I'm sitting there calling, keep calling. They come in, I kill two, kill two, kill two. And, I mean, they just keep. Yeah. And if I'd have had, uh, I'd have killed ten if I'd have had two more bullets, but right. I only took eight bullets with me. Yeah, I think sometimes people stop calling way too soon. Yeah. And I'm, I'm always, and that's where I go back and forth. I don't like predator hunting with thermal. I like having a thermal. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't you know, I won't it never fails when I don't care a goddamn thermal. We need a thermal Absolutely. to find something or whatever. Or at least a hand scanner. I just don't like shooting behind a thermal. Unless it's pigs, because I don't it's pigs. I don't yeah. care. Uh and I think it has more to do with uh how my eyes interact with thermal. Like that's why I probably never really favored it that much. But uh well, it took me forever to get to where I was comfortable with them. Right. Yeah, that's and, very and that, much a... That, that 430 coyote deal, it was about halfway through that deal where I got... Well, if I ever get that book wrote, you'll be able to tell because I, right. I say, all right, I, I got my furthest shot with a 150 yards with the right. thermal, and then next thing is 187 yards with yeah. the thermal, and then that, that, and I get, finally got more and more comfortable because the distance is jacked with it. Yes. But then... Then I finally had to tell my mind, Your depth I'm shooting depth. a 22 Creedmoor. If they're inside a four, 400, just shoot to some yep. bit. And, I mean, Hold a little bit high and send it. Got, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if nothing else, put the east and west on their back. You're going to kill a <laughs> thumb bit. Yep. Now, when you get past that, then it's like that yep. one I killed at 555 uh, with the thermal. I shot the first time. I overcompensated. You know, I shot way the hell over yep. him, two foot. But with the suppressor, he didn't even know I shot right. at him from yep. that far. And then the next one, I dropped her down and walked it yep. past. But you know, it's uh, thermal lights, whatever the case may be. I think this is where thermal could be potentially even more handy. Is uh, some people like they stick to those. I'm going to call for X amount of time that I'm fucking going. There's been many a times over the years. I'm not going to be like this happens every fucking time. Yeah. But over the years, there's been many times where I just kept calling. And cows kept coming, you know, uh, it's just sometimes when they're on, you just got, and if you're in the area that holds enough cows, yeah. just keep calling, especially shooting suppressed. I don't recall that happening as often when I was unsuppressed. Oh yeah. As it was when I'm suppressed. And, you know, I don't, I had this conversation last night, matter of fact. <laughs> but, but contest hunting is totally different. Yeah. That's like this guy was asking me, how long do you stay at a, I said, a contest and we very almost never stay past 10 minutes, but usually five minutes. Five minutes, we're going to come. Yeah. 
I'm trying to make four stands an hour. You're not going to make two up an hour. And like I say, you got a, a coyote out there yipping at you. You may or may not get him. Yeah. And usually if they're yipping at you, you're not getting that son of a bitch. Yep. And you wasted an hour jacking with him. Yeah. And then I could have killed t- two doubles four yeah. different times. Yeah. And so, uh, but going back to that, you know, years ago when we kept all that data, 83% of the time, coyotes, we we had a visual inside of eight minutes. Mm-hmm. Same with Wyman Menzer. You don't know it's in his book. He says the mm-hmm. same. Me and Wyman don't agree about a ball a whole lot, but damn sure <laughs> yeah. about that. Yep. And uh, same with cats. You know, if you're, they're going to come, they're going to come. Now, you, yes, you can always sit and, and uh, you may or may not get them, but right. you may waste 10 stands yes. to, for that one to work. Yeah, that's where. But it's a timed event yes. in a contest. So you. That's where people get. Twerked off on contests and everything else. Totally like different. You're t- of all the people that I've talked to, had in here and everywhere else that have uh, consistently over the years stacked up big numbers, they're always, like when I talk to them, you could tell like they're more concerned about time than just about anything else. And they're always, like I've never talked to any of them that weren't on the road within 10 minutes oh, yeah. of starting Hauling that stand. Ass. You got you, know. you got to haul ass. Now, I ain't going to lie, we don't haul ass nearly as much, but boy, there for 20 years. Now we're old, but by God, <laughs> we used to haul ass, yeah. and we still run hard, you know, yeah. uh, but but not like we do. But it, that was our deal. It's a time event. We got to yeah. be going. And, uh, and you know, this is where other and people. And if the couch are still coming, yeah, I, we'll stay there. But yeah. If you can see them coming, yeah, yeah, not yeah. not that you know, not gambling on thinking it's going to be one of those stands. Like we're if we ain't seen nothing by this time point, we're gone because we are contest hunting. We are going for the hungry, stupid, whatever that you yeah. want to assign to the cow. That's the ones we want. We want the ones coming in quick. We want to move on to the next stand and try and get some more. Mm-hmm. And I think you know a lot of people just when especially when they first get into contest hunting, they don't understand that uh, time is everything. Being handy with a rifle is everything. Having good land is everything. Like there's so much oh, that goes into having. It, you know, it happens every year. People get lucky. You know, teams that aren't that great of shots or whatever, they get lucky and they kill whatever. The people who repeatedly year after year do something, those people are the ones you want to start and quiz and ask. And again, I've never met any of them that aren't great shots. I've never met any of them that, that don't. Like they know exactly where they're going. It's none of this. Like we're just gonna go over here and you know peter around. No, they exactly know where they're going in there. They're moving on to the next stand within ten minutes. Like they're almost. Some will be almost to their next stand within ten minutes. Like they're oh, just, yeah. they're going. Well, you know, in 2017 when I hunted uh, Arizona, the uh, New Mexico state, and the world, everybody blew their mind when I told them I was coming back here to hunt. Why would you go back here and there and hunt? Salt Lake City, you got a 16 hour drive to get back here because I'm going on my knowledge. Yes. I don't have no yeah. wasted deals. I know where my coyotes are. I know where everything is. Yeah. And I'm betting that my knowledge of my land mm-hmm. and knowing it will make up the difference of the right. next day. And yeah. it worked, you know. Yeah. Well, except for my big mouth when Nathan had <laughs> kicked my ass. But, right. but yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, but just like I told them, I said, you know, y'all know where everything is there. You don't have no wasted time. Yep. You'll, that'll make up the difference. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, think about it. If you want to be successful at contest hunting, uh, you better know your land very well. You better have access to quite a bit of land, that. depending on how many contests you want to run. And, you know, and when you go enter into like the world, and when they call the worlds, the worlds, something like that. If you think oh, I'm going to go hunt in a different state, well, how many trips are you going to go up there to start scouting? If you're going to be successful, you got to make bunches of them. You know that that's that's the trick. There's it, and I tell this to everybody. Like, you know, I get asked this question a few times a year. Do you think you can go so and so place where insert wherever it's hard to kill cows and kill a cow? Well, I'm sure. Well, how long? I don't know. Well, how long could would it take you to kill a cow at your own house? Half a day, sometimes one hour, sometimes yeah. five minutes. Yeah. Some days I can walk outside my back porch, kill a coat, but I'm going to know my home turf better than literally anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. And, uh, 
home court advantage. Yes. I'm going to tell you. And I, That's what I always give Al Morris hell about, you know, when he said, uh, why don't you come up here and hunt the real hunt? You quit hunting them junior high hunts. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, it's easy to hunt your own backyard. I said, that's home court. Why advantage. wouldn't you, you want know, to? <laughs> are you going to talk shit about me that I got to go up there? Yeah. It's fun to go. It's fun to go explore new land and hunt kind of oh, as yeah. you go and you're yeah. scouting and looking at the land. Oh, this looks like a good spot. Let's make it stand here. But if I'm entering into a contest, that's not how I want to enter that situation of going. Yeah, that's tough. Oh, and it never fails. Uh, You'll make a stand somewhere because it looks good, and you go like another mile or half mile or quarter mile, sometimes 100 yards. Damn, this was way better. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, that, yeah. That's the kind of situations I don't want to run into if, if I'm going to hunt a contest, which I don't hunt them much anymore. But Yeah, it, I ain't going to lie. This may be my my deal, my year. This, you know, I'm going to try to win, you know, because like I say, I've never hunted San Angelo much, and we'll try to win most coyotes on that some gun. And, but, I may be done. I mean, <laughs> lo local hunts. I mean, Texas, you know, around. I love hunted every hunt, and, you know, da, da, da. And, but I like going off. Yeah. You know, I hunted Nevada, and I hunted Wyoming, and I hunted that. Even that Beaver, Oklahoma hunt was a good one. And that was a funny deal. You know, we I hunted with a Hunter Rigdon, old rooster, and uh, every time I'm hunted up there, his land looks like this right there at Parrington. You know, it looks about like this yeah. table. And, uh, it's real green up there this yeah, year. Yeah, we got it? up there to sign in. And old, uh, Dane Drake, oh, yeah. this old guy, old Dane goes, he goes, yeah, I tell you what, people's gonna, all these guys are going to go hunting. They're, people are going to find out that they're going to go to places that they usually hunt, and they're going to find out that it's grown up, and they're not going to be able to make them spots. <laughs> yeah. And then we got back to the weigh-in that next day. He goes, remember I told you about all them people? Turns out I was that guy. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I know. Mean, Dang, very up well. They had yep. 41 inches in a daggum uh, a month. We uh, actually – I went uh, prong learn hunting with Dane. Oh, uh, yeah? Last year, me and Dane coyote hunted a lot together. Uh, uh, yeah. Last year. I think it was last year. It might have been a year before. But anyways. That was the first time I met him. Hello. Well, actually, I met him a million years ago. Right. Elk City, but shit. I can't remember my wife. I walk into the next room. But yeah, but, yeah I really was the shit out of old Dane. They was, uh, he asked me to come hunt that one. I was actually trying to. We had something come up. Yeah, that's right. Was. Yeah, you would. Uh, yeah. But no, after after I shot my pronghorn, the ranch was always look badass for cow hunting yeah and i'm just like we're done can we go make a few stands you know i uh, hate to be that guy but i just want to call this beautiful country yeah uh, same thing i'm just like well uh we could have just brought bb guns because uh you're not gonna be able to see a goddamn thing unless it's right that ain't no shit it was, <laughs> he said it was pretty rough for everybody it was wild and uh hell we did we hell i didn't even remember how many we killed it wasn't many but we it, it you know, they, I don't remember us seeing very many. We had three come in on the first end. I missed one that I should have been, but uh, <laughs> Hunter wiped my ass and shot some of running and uh, kind of come into that right where you can't yeah. get turned right and we're in a wide ass open, but still should have shot some bitch. But yeah, we we didn't do very good. That's the only, that's the, and this may be the draw for other people. That's the one thing I don't like about contests. Is you don't get to pick the day you're hunting. <laughs> yeah. They pick it for you and it doesn't matter. And I'm not one of those guys. I used to be. Whatever the weather, we're gonna hunt that some bitch. We're tough. Uh a couple of years ago, I'm just like, if it's bad weather, I'm not hunting. <laughs> I don't care. That's gonna be this weekend, <laughs> I think. It's supposed to be goddamn twenty degrees with twenty mile an hour wind, and it's a good thing I got me a bunch of that new sick of shit my buddies give me oh man. I, I wore that shit out the other night i was gonna make a stand and make sure my gun was on and all that so i put on them sick uh, uh bibs and, mm -hmm. and i love them so much i i wear them around the house i'm naked underneath <laughs> it you know i mean it's got that silky shit in yeah. there i guarantee it gives me a heart on walking around it and uh them serve guns but uh so i took it out and and god and i had the jacket on too too hot it's yeah. got to be pretty damn cold before you wear that stuff. Yeah, that is it. The white tail suit. Uh, the yeah. white tail line is. Uh, it's duck, dude. I mean. It's, oh, okay. It's, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, what the hell they call? It? Cost. I think the bottoms cost. The bills cost like six twenty-five, <laughs> yeah. and the jacket was 
five and a quarter. I've got I've got a the white tail suit, which is kind of the same thing, but it's a, a real quiet outside. Uh, well, that's the way this one is. Okay. Yeah, because it's it's oh, it's real soft leather yeah, until you get to the yeah, knees. Yeah. And then it's slick. Yeah. Well, which is great because I thought. Well, this is going to be a cockerbird grabbing yeah, son of a yeah. bitch. But down low, it was good. Oh, I got one whoever, of those suits. Whoever designed them deals was Hunter. Yeah. Because that jacket, I love that son of a bitch. I've got one of those, and I've worn it maybe three times because it had, like you said, it has. got to be pretty damn. I don't like being Stay Puff Marshmallow Man not being able to move. I'll, I'll sacrifice some warmth to be mobile. Yeah. In, anytime I'm predator hunting. That's why I like Until this hunting's a different story. That jacket I got, <laughs> it's not real. Puffy, right? Know, like that. It's real. and then I got another one that's just a windbreaker. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a wind, but it's loud. You know, yeah. it's not really for. But boy, it's a warm. First time I got it, it was sleeting, and uh, I went out with twenty five mile an hour wind. I was rattling. Shit, it was good, but like I say, it sounded like it was hitting a tin roof. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sleet on yeah. it. Yeah, I like a, I like a lot of their. I like a lot of Sitka base layer shirts and. Outer jackets and stuff like that, but I wear mostly Kuyu pants. To me, Kuyu's got the pants figured out a little bit better than Sitka. Never yeah. even heard it. I it's, didn't even know what the hell Sitka was. <laughs> yeah, if, if it ain't Magellan, I didn't have it. I, I tell you what, Magellan's come a long ways. I uh, wear Magellan shirts 24 7. They got them uh, uh, real thin, they're mm -hmm. made for fat boys. And I love them, some bitches. I mean, I work, I work in them every day. Hell, I went up there oh, a couple years ago, and they had it, you know, after deer season, though, what they have them sell, and they mm -hmm. were like $10. Yeah. I loaded up on them, some bitches. I yeah. still got a lot of Magellan pants. That's what yeah. I, I wear a lot I of Magellan like pants. They got them zipper pockets yeah. right here, yeah. and they're neat. So mm -hmm. I can put my phone in there when I'm riding horseback. Yeah. I don't lose that, some bitch. Yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, Magellan nowadays has a pretty good suit. I always. I used to, it used to be just like optics and rifles and everything else. I used to buy a bunch of camo and test it out. Yeah. Cause I wanted to know and everything else. And I, that was one of the things I just had to put aside. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, this shit's all getting way too expensive. I got to stop buying something. And yeah. Was, camo was it, but used to, you know, you didn't have many choices. You had like walls. You know, oh, yeah. Carhartt feels rich. You know? you, that wall saved your life. <laughs> yeah. But nowadays, like, uh, Academy and you know Magellan will be at Academy most of the time. They'll have so many different really nice suits nowadays, especially at the price point. And then there's so many different options out there nowadays, especially online uh, online shopping. And after the hunting seasons are over, is the best time to buy the shit. Or during the summer, they they sell that shit for hardly nothing. I mean, you're talking yeah. about forty to sixty percent off. Oh yeah, which is a pretty good deal. I mean, but I will say. uh I used to, I used to be just like most other people are. Probably gonna listen to us talk about something like that. Shit ain't worth the money. Blah 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 blah. It is expensive, but it's worth every goddamn dime in my opinion. Because on the real cold days when you'd have just so much shit piled up inside them coveralls and everything else, you can't even move and uh, very immobile. And then you get high as shit and you just start sweating. There's nothing you can do other than start stripping off clothes or just sit there and sweat. All this new performance gear, uh, all the layers and all the ways you can, like a, my favorite jacket, you can unzip here to where you can breathe. And then, like I said, the Kuyu pants I wear, like my cold weather ones, all the camo and all the shit I would wear, and you wouldn't have any mobility or anything else like that, and you're still kind of cold. A lot of people still, I mean, it's just like, People spending more money on rifles, suppressors, thermals, e-calls, everything else. People are more open to it nowadays than they used to be. But there's still a lot of a lot of people are like, ah, that shit's just too expensive. It's not worth it. And it's like, calm down. Tell you bought some and tried it out. It is kind of worth the money. I mean, yes, it is expensive. That's an investment. That's not something that I'm going to, like any of my hunting clothes nowadays i'm not gonna go work in that shit i'm not gonna go weld it and no, go no, fix no, fence because no. i don't want to tear it up i want this shit to last me forever and for the most part i bought my first sets of kuyu and sitka four five six years ago and they're still with me uh and it's because i don't go work at them and everything i only use them for hunting and all that shit and they are worth it just like suppressors are worth it just like modern 
Barn Home Automotive Equipment. Yeah, yeah. Like the new rifles we got nowadays. Yeah. I mean, every the game has changed, and yeah. I'm not buying five hundred dollars for a, a bib, but you'll spend five thousand on a rifle getting made and, and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if it's that big of a difference, you'll make you'll make. And whoever come up with the sickest stuff, like I was saying a while ago, they're hunters because I love love some of the stuff that they fit better. They're not yeah. dragging the ground or the the coats ain't real broken. You, mm-hmm. They've got all kinds of different kinds, and it. Well, you can with new performance fabrics, you can uh. You can wear less clothes, so you can stay more mobile. Well, that's what I like, especially daytime hunting. You're trying to move, you know, relatively quick, even if you're not contest hunting. In between stands, you can put in more stands during the day. Any little thing I feel helps. Meaning, like I'm not taking off and putting on a bunch of shit. I'm not getting caught up in everything because I'm I'm wearing streamlined clothes that keep me warm enough on stand. But I can unzip them bitches when I'm rushing back and forth in between stand. Get God, if there. you're sitting in a rack and they got a 20 mile an hour wind <laughs> and it's 25 degrees, <laughs> you'll go, oh, man, I'm glad I bought this song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Because yeah, some of that, some of that camo, it, that wind just don't, it, yeah. it cuts right through it. Yeah. 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 That's definitely the difference between like old school shit and newer shit is the performance of it and how well it works. Okay. And then like you start looking into, like I said, the these systems that they have nowadays, the base layer, the mid layer, and the outer layer, and all that shit. And then, like, like Sitka does, you have your duck hunting lines that are very specific to duck hunting. Your white tail lines, it's more specific to sitting still. That's the, I only get out the white tail shit when we're nighttime hunting out of a rack, and you're just gonna be sitting in the rack all night, you know, on these big ranches where we're not getting out. Any other time, like I said, I run, I wear a bunch of Sitka tops and jackets and Kuyu pants because it's me. My opinion, uh, Kuyu has the most comfortable pants in, in the world. I don't, I don't, I'm gonna check they got it figured out. Uh, Kuyu, which it's on, it's online only, but they just recently opened up a store in Dallas. That's that's first, is that correct, Fitzy? That's the first and only, uh, brick and mortar they have is this store in Dallas, which is online only, though, which they make it super easy, like you know, all the oh, different. Damn. They have different thicknesses of pants for different jobs and all that kind of shit, you know, how it goes. But I don't know. It's like going back to the Magellan shit at Academy. Even those suits nowadays have gotten really well. And they've gotten to wear, which you have to hit it at the right time of year because it is a big box store. They get rid of shit during certain times of year. The best, what I found used to was as soon as like dove season rolls around, get to Academy. Because they'll have everything in stock. You'll be able to get all the shit together. Whereas, like, late in the season, you have this mix-matched shit's mission yeah. and sizes and everything else to sell. Well, that's what usually the way I am. I'm like my wife. After Christmas, all the Christmas light shit's on sale and all that. She'll go in there and she'll stock yeah. up with all kinds of that stuff worth the money. Well, now I'm that guy. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to the Academy. I said, deer season <laughs> ended last week. We're going to the Academy. Yeah. We're going to get all the gloves and the yep. caps and the socks and the boots and, yeah, everything real cheap. And, it, you know, <laughs> that's the best time uh, after hunting season's over. That's the best time to buy anything for the right. following year because everything's going to be on sale. They're going to try and liquidate it and get it out of the way to make room for all the new shit the next year or whatever. And then also, like, a lot of big box stores are seasonal. So, like, they'll move this shit out and put in, like, fish and shit or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. But yeah. it's also – I've also found that – not every academy, not every track supply, not every, you name it, big box store is equal. Some places you go to, like their academies will have a lot more shit, a lot different shit. Whereas like our academy is a joke. <laughs> just, yeah. You know, they don't have shit for selection. Whereas I've been to like San Angelo, uh, mid hunt season. They have tons of options on camo and all those, but yeah. I don't know. Buy yeah. the shit when it's on sale. You can save a ton of money. And uh, you ever go up north hunting any? Out west, Wyoming, Nevada, all that. Not yet. Well, uh, you got you got to get. I want to. You got. I've to. been invited and was gonna try and go up to Wyoming, uh, make another trip to Nebraska and Wyoming, all that shit this winter. But it's just not looking like it's gonna happen. Yeah, the Midwest is gonna be my next deal. You know, <clears throat> like I say, I've been trying to get win that Nevada deal. Mm-hmm. 
Now I got an Arizona buck. I got Nevada. I'm trying to get the state now. I'm working on Wyoming. Watch <laughs> I got. I hunted with old Garrett, uh, Kesick, and uh, Shane Farella, and uh, we got our ass kicked. But it was just <laughs> we were hunting public land, and then we had some private land, and it turned out hell. We were finding more brass at our stands than we were for coyotes. So, yeah. and that's the hazards of do. But <laughs> yeah. and I had, you know, I had so much fun. You know, you know what? Garrett was like, man. I was sorry I got you up. I said, dude, so I'm looking out here. I'm at 9,000 feet. I'm looking down there. 200 elk over here, wild horses over there. And when you get old, you're going to appreciate them sits. And I had such a good time. And, and, uh, but, uh, but bad thing about it, when I go off them some guns, you know, I'm not a big drinker. And, uh, in matter of fact, it's probably been 10, 10, 15. It's been a long time since I've been tight. Like I say, I'm not a big drinker. <laughs> I got up here to that Wyoming hunt, that uh, best of the best, you know, the national deal. We had a good time. Of course, there was a bunch of Foxborough guys, a bunch of guys I know up there. Them poor son of bitches. I, I could have swore I had titties. They were trying to take advantage of me because they kept kept feeding me goddamn beer. <laughs> and you know you're there you know you want to be mm -hmm. gorgeous so i drink one i drink another and then you get to bullshitting and you don't realize how many beers you had <laughs> i bet i drank 10 beers in an hour and i'm drinking them daggum beers and then finally i told myself hey boy we gotta go <laughs> and uh so i feel tight and then we get to the bar we'll go to the bar or the hotel and old garrett said man come have one more drink for me you know i'm gonna leave early in the morning so i was kind of want to go to bed and uh he said well come have one more drink so we went and had a drink so i thought i had enough of this beer and shit i can tell you that so i said i'll order me a crown and coke just a little old shot of round crown and coke well i told the uh bartender i said yeah give me a little crown of coke well I think she was trying to take advantage of me too. She comes back with a goddamn counter coat big as that sun <laughs> gun right there. And I hit that sun gun. Well, it wasn't very long. I I, I got I go to bed. I don't I don't feel so good. But what was funny, the next morning I get up, of course, you know, I don't ever sleep and it's like two o'clock in the morning. I, I'm ready to leave and getting all my stuff. I look down there underneath my door, there's a number. It's got a guy's name, Mike, so and so, and I won't say. And I'm almost tempted to call this guy right now, <laughs> because in one of these days on a podcast, I'm gonna call this guy because uh, it said Mike and had his number, had his email, and his whole deal. I said, "Who the hell is this guy?" And I, I put it in my wallet and then uh, go home. I get the next day. Oh, Garrett calls me. Hey, uh, did you find a number underneath your door? I said, yeah. I said, who the hell was that? He goes, not five minutes after you left that bar, the bar up there, this guy comes in. And it turns out he uh, is from California. And he is the number one Joe Biden supporter in America. <laughs> and, and, of course, we kind of rode with it. When, and he said, well, you just missed the best <laughs> Joe Biden supporter, and he said he went on telling he lived in uh, Nancy Pelosi's district and tells all the accomplishments oh, boy. that she does. I mean, <laughs> and thank God I didn't meet this guy, but I, I ever since. So he said, "Well, yeah, Clay Reed, he's he's in room one twenty three, <laughs> and so he come to my room, and knocked on the door. I was already out, thank God, trying to meet the next great Joe Biden supporter." <laughs> And uh, so one of these days, I'm, I'm going to get the deal. I'm going to call it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Clay. I heard that. Is this Mike? I said, I heard you were a uh, an avid Trump supporter. And say what kind of reaction I got out of this guy. That would have been hilarious. Oh, but, man. But, yeah, I had a great, great time up there. Stacey Morris, Clay Owens, and, and uh, uh, Rhett Mayhill. But, man, it's that wind up there. We'll kick your ass. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't. But it was so weird because we hunted all oh, like 50 miles west. And and at Rawlings, the mm -hmm. wind was blowing like Mach 5. Then we get over where we was. It wasn't that bad at all. Mm -hmm. And it was just 50 mile difference. And we're out there in the wide ass open. But, but it was cool hunting that, going off and hunting. So there. far, I'm sure I've asked you on this other podcast. Whatever. So far, what has been your favorite state to count, honey? Definitely Nevada. I like Nevada. Nevada is, is matter of fact, I'm trying to buy some land up there. I would love because 
the, I found a place up there uh, north of Wells, Nevada, mm-hmm. 680 acres for $119,000. That's pretty and, good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you ain't going to find that around here. No. And I'm like, wow. And uh, uh, it, northern Nevada, now you get into that southern Nevada, it gets hot. Right. We're not into that. But you get north of Nevada, on, long 80 up through there, it's it's just cool country. And it's coyote country, and there ain't nobody there. Hell, like Wells is one of the biggest you know, cities rent along through there and it's got 1,100 people. And then you go to Elko and it's got about 2,500, you know, and there ain't nobody. And, uh, Ely's, Ely, Nevada is probably my favorite town. It's kind of an old town. They got, uh, casinos everywhere. And mm-hmm. Maybe because they got whores over there. They got, they, they got them <laughs> whorehouses in that. So. <laughs> yeah, we got it. We got it. This is a funny story. Like I say, I don't ever sleep. So we were staying in Winnemucca and uh, at the Winnemucca Inn, and we go over there and and uh, so this old gal uh, every night at midnight when I get up, I go in there and it'd be just me, the bartender and the door guy in this casino slash motel. We're sitting there and all of a sudden this uh, uh, I guess it was the Saturday morning. This gal comes in, good looking little old gal. Good, look gorgeous, 25 years old, blonde, wearing blue jeans and uh, boots. And, I mean, looked like a little barrel racer come off there. She goes, bullshit, with us all that? And I said, hey. She goes, oh, I just got off work. I said, oh, yeah? What do you do? So I work at the brothel. A brothel? There's a whorehouse? Oh, yeah. I said, no shit? And I was like, are you like the door girl or are you like one of the girls she goes no i'm one of the girls i said no shit and then she told me i said well how much you make over there and she told me how much you made she said, i only work on mondays and fridays and said da, da, da. and then wednesdays i go to vegas i said man i gotta move to freaking i was telling old lady and then i was like you know, she was born and raised there and i mean it was it was it was weird. You don't get that in Archer City, America. I was telling my wife, I said, "Hey, they got a gal up there. She's for rent. Can I have some?" Hey, you son of a bitch! Don't you bring nothing back home, baby. I know you can't wipe off. No, no, no. Yeah, but it it threw me for a loop. Yeah, yeah. There's brothel. What? You got brothel? I get all excited. Yeah, oh, boy. but no, Nevada is, is cool. That's what I was telling that boy last night. I said, you need to get you a band of buds because you can go anywhere. The whole state's public land. Yeah. You just go anywhere. And, you know, you like I found that one mine out there 37 miles back in there. And it's just, and uh, of course, you got to learn to hunt that sage. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you got to learn to hunt it. And they're all over that, in that sage. And, uh, but you got to be quick. Yeah, that'll be quick, yeah. and that's why me and uh, me and Rusty we were proficient. You know what was funny? I think the first day I killed everything but one. The next day Rusty killed everything but one, mm-hmm. and everything come to his side, and we wind up killing seventeen in two days. But it, it we hunted good. Matter of fact, he's coming this weekend to hunt with me. And this, I said, well, you done there, so now you come yeah. to us. So he, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, I got to pick him up at the airport Friday, and and he's going to go. He's going to get to see what 762 teams look like. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a bunch, which it'll be, you know, it'll be tough winning that summer gun, but hell, that's the way I like it. Hell, anybody can go win a 10, 10 team hunt. You know, right. Ain't no honor in that. But you won that <laughs> San Angelo most dogs. I'm not into the weight contest. I'm not into the luck contest, but right. uh, you kill most dogs, you've done something. Yeah. Especially at San Angelo, because there's some, you know, you got Casey and Laramie and Nathan, and you got Bruce and Keith and yeah. uh, Wesley and Matt Skowski. I mean, you got some killing some yeah. bitches in there. Yeah. And they're, so they're allowing thermals again, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I know, I know that with them bringing that back, that's uh, Wesley and them came back into the yeah. picture on most right. dogs that's for sure so when you are like hunting a contest when you hunted nevada with him we all both that was shotgun only correct Jargon. so how were y'all if you can explain it yeah uh, how are y'all setting up as, as it pertains to like was one of y'all you know how was y'all set up uh, as far as the call and with the wind and all that kind of stuff well you, you put the call right there on you because mm-hmm. you, i mean there ain't no 
very few clear places that to do it. You, you know, you'll try to find a clear place, but you know, some of them places you got to stand up because yeah. the stage is so big. But usually we have a dove chair, sit in a dove chair, you know, right there. Rusty would be the upwind guy. He would he would be with the caller and go with that, and I would. I was I, I always watched the back door. It seemed like you know everything was different, but it wasn't really any different down here. But it, but it is a adjustment to you know you're, right tactics. You know there ain't no sitting there yeah. laid back yeah. the deal because it's going to happen, and yeah. you won't see them until they're right on. You. Yeah, kissing the barrel. Matter of fact, I think the one one coyote. There's only one coyote that got away from us. There was a double come in, but it was like I say it's so fast. Rusty killed the one. And got a shot at the other one, but he, I mean, it was just bam, bam. Mm-hmm. It's all within a 10 yard, you got a 10 yard window to get him. And, yeah. Uh, but it, it was so pretty cool. Were y'all still sitting up in a crosswind or were y'all set up in headwind or? Uh, no, we, yeah, we set up into the wind, mm-hmm. you know, just like I say, Rusty, we didn't deal. And I'd be over to the right or left and, and I'd always kind of watch the back, back door yeah. just in case. And, uh, hell, that one I shot way the hell out there. It was funny. But, we actually had a little bit of a sand dune hill, mm-hmm. and I was up on it watching the back coming, and I could see him kind of mobiling through there, but you just see glimpses of him. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the sun gun stood up on one of them stage and picked his head up, and boom, that's where yeah. I shot him. So, uh, so uh, as it pertains to cow hunting in general, do you prefer a headwind or a crosswind or either? Headwind. I'm I'm a headwind guy. You just walk into the yeah. wind, keep the wind in your face. But yeah, keep wind in my face and sun in my back and of all that, you know. And if crosswind, you know, everything's different. But of course, but that's just the way it always is. But hell, I got a buddy of mine that kicks my ass every year, and they call everything downwind, straight downwind. I remember. Oh, I can't but, remember this guy's name. You know, name. they hunt with a little wide open country. Yeah, but totally yeah. You cool. can. So what I've seen. Uh, over the years is the more I go into open country, like m- we're talking about way more open than this. Yeah. We're talking about like prairie type shit. It's almost all, all those guys that I've hunted with in that vast open country, they almost always only headwinds. Like they don't even think about crosswinds or anything like that. It's just headwind all the time. And we're, cause we're literally traveling through what we're just called headwind all yeah. the time. And it's super interesting to see the cool thing about hunting with, tons of different people over the years is seeing other people's tactics oh yeah so and, i love it you know see how they set up in certain wind situations and what they're looking for and all that stuff i have called in animals from downwind oh yeah and i would i would just about assume that you're calling more cows in the downwind just because the sound's going to travel that way that yeah. you never see but i've never struck out and gone i'm only calling into the downwind I would just about assume you're going to shoot everything much further. Well, I tell you what, if the wind is blowing, mm-hmm. if it's blowing, it, I ain't got no problem calling straight down. Right. If it's blowing hard, because it's kind of like old Marvin Henry told us that one time, and his theory on it made a lot of sense. He goes, when it's a dead calm and you're smoking a cigarette, what does the wind, what does your smoke do? It lingers yeah. right there. Yeah. But then when it's a big wind, it's all that, those little deals are all spread mm-hmm. up, and he thinks that's the way it was your scent and i agree with that yeah i mean that, we've had some really good days on on, on the wind on a straight down wind yeah and uh but as a guy that that that's not typical i mean it's kind of like you talking about it makes it hard to do but yeah. we have done it and, yeah but you know i like to i like to put the collar up there way ahead of me mm-hmm. you know 50 60 yards and that way you know the hard hard ones coming in you're going to see them bend, but then the smart ones, they're going to circle right into your yeah, trap, yeah. right into your lap, yeah. and you'll get them downwind guy, you know, because, you know, you know how they do, oh, we see the call, and then yeah. they work around yeah. to the downwind to get them, and uh, so, but. Would you, so, as far as topography and terrain goes, uh, what's your favorite, what's your favorite style of calling? Would you rather have big open areas with some elevation you like getting in that thick shit like what's your ideal stand location i love cedar break country Mm -hmm. you know that where not thick cedars but where you can get inside them cedars yeah because that cedar it hides your smell smell and you have a good backdrop yeah and with a shotgun oh 
I mean, but we've done it a million times. We used to hunt a place out there by Guthrie, man, called the Croton. Oh, and it was it was tailor made for that shit. But so that's what. Uh, but yeah, that's that's probably and and it's even better if you got a lock out there at Ely. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all flat sage down in the bottom. But then when you get up to the side of the mountains, it gets into the deal and you got a little slow rolling hill where mm-hmm. you can pick up and then walk over to the other yes. hill. And it's got them, <laughs> yeah. you know, 100 yards in between yeah. sparsely cedars. That's, oh, that's, that's that's the type of stuff I love to call. Is There's enough topography and terrain I can drive a lot closer because we're saving time. Yes. You know, and, and I'm not I'm not a contest hunter, but I still look at things like when, when, when the coyotes are on, whatever makes them be on i want to go like let's make some damn stands uh-huh. the closer i could drive in and be hidden the better and i i almost don't like vast open country because it's almost like an overload for my brain because i'm i'm i know i need to be watching up close but i can see so much so i just get like <laughs> yeah know, i'm just staring I'm, I'm, give I'm, me those little little bitty uh green fields in the in the brush or little mm-hmm. openings like you're talking about give me a little bitty opening to watch that's good with the wind and the sun and i'm i'm content in our country we got what we call salt skulls you know which yeah. is oh they're the guy yeah solid daggum mesquites around yeah. it and you can put the collar out in the middle and them coyotes love to walk on that salt mm-hmm. skull because it's easy on their feet and they'll come right up them draws i don't give a shit where they are yeah. it makes it a lot better and i, I do love that too yeah and that's well, when me and Kelly J- Jackson killed them 29, that's what, exactly what we were hunting. Yeah. Soft skulls. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a big... I mean, it's tough to get a coyote, especially these days where everybody's throwing shells at and calling all the time. They're always going to work the brush. That's why, like when I was out there in North Carolina, I was telling them boys, I said, you guys are missing the bank. Y'all's country is tailor-made for shotgun. Mm-hmm. And I had a guy call me the other day. And he goes, hey, Clay, this is old so-and-so. He said, remember I talked to you? It's old man. He said, I want to tell you, I said, I had my ba- best day ever the other day. I killed eight cows. He killed them all with a shotgun inside the deal. Mm-hmm. And they don't, they, hell, they, none of them uh, get in. I said, because they got fields and all yeah. that, but them drainages where it's mm-hmm. all solid big trees and a good campany, canopy, and they're it's open. Oh, one guy looking that way, one guy looking that way, because it ain't thirty miles ac- or thirty yards across. They're going to be either coming one yeah. way or the other. Oh shit! Yeah, and that's exactly what he said. He said, "Boy, that's adrenaline. Yeah. They get all over you." And I said, "Oh yeah." <laughs> if you can find a shotgun shell that'll kill them, because yeah. it ain't worth a shit. When I took some, uh, I'm not a big hornady, uh, heavy dead cow guy. And the other day, <laughs> I had some of those left over, and so I was uh, working new call and. And I, so I go out there in the deal, and I, I call that cow at 40 yards, and, and I shot that some gun and covered him up. You can see it because he was on red dirt. Covered him up. And he went, wah, 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 wah. Shot him again. Wah, 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 wah. Shot him again. Wah, wah, wah. And run off like he'd never been shot. I, I tend to think, back from the shotgun days, that so the best thing about lead is it's not hard. It'll deform. It'll when it impacts a coyote, it'll deform and dump energy. That's why if I'm gonna run, if I'm not running tungsten, I will. I would much rather prefer just generic lead, like you know buckshot, like you prefer. Yeah. Because the, the the minute you start coating the lead in copper or uh, there's also nickel plated lead, you're making it harder. So what is it, what is it gonna do? It's just gonna pinhole right through the coyote and. It's still just a lead with some sort of coating. It's not transferring a lot of energy inside the cow, just pushing through. Whereas, I mean, tungsten is a totally different animal. It will go through, but you're also putting a way denser material inside that. And that's why the apex works really well because it's very, it's a lot smaller. So it's more of that dense shot on target. And it's not big enough, like a big ball to travel through. Whereas, like, your hoardy and stuff, it's just a big BB coated in copper, making it harder. So it's not deforming and dumping tons of energy inside the coat. Oh, uh, but, I mean, there's also, like, for the nerds out there, for the shotgun shit, uh, where it does aid you and what makes it appealing to a lot of people is making the outside of it a little bit harder by coating it in copper or nickel is it won't deform, you know, when it's going down your barrel. So it, a lot of times it'll pattern really well. And that's what draws people to it. They go right. shoot and they're like, oh, I'll be able to shoot them way out because this pattern's really well. And the reality is there's a lot of times they'll pinhole through the shit and they won't, they're not transferring a lot of energy because it is coated. It's okay. like this. 
I don't know. It's a the shotgun game. When I was in it, it I treated it just like the ammo and shit. I just yeah. narrowed out about shit and tested all kinds of stuff. And nothing kills better than tungsten if it patterns well. Boy, uh, it, but it, it is the most expensive shit. To shoot that tungsten. ain't no shit. That, I could, I could that's what what you said you did. That's what I end up doing right before I kind of because I don't even hunt shotguns anymore except for birds. Uh, right. But. Uh, right before I got out of it, that's what I did because tungsten had pre- just progressively gone up every year, and I couldn't imagine what it costs now. But I would go tungsten, lead, tungsten, <laughs> tungsten, lead. Because uh, I am definitely with shotguns, especially if you're hunting a contest where you got to get that coat. If it's twitching, I'm shooting at some bitch. Because oh, I've yeah. seen them when I would test out all these new loads. Like, again, going back to the TV days when everybody was putting out predator hunting shit. Uh, same thing with shotgun shells. There's all kinds of like Winchesters coming out new load and Hornets coming out new load and uh, heavy shots coming out new load. Everybody's coming out new coyote loads, you know, which is normally like some sort of coated lead or tungsten shot or what have wow. you. I would test a lot. And I remember when I tested, it was something new from Winchester. I don't even remember what it's called. It's some sort of nickel plated lead shot. I think it's BB or some shit. Pattern really well. Pattern amazing. I emptied that shotgun twice on one coat, and it didn't kill some bitch because they're just blowing right through him. Oh, and I, that's when I'm just like, I'm going to tungsten. I'm just not switching anymore. Like fuck all this other stuff. <laughs> oh, that's about where I'm at. Like I say, after I seen what it done in that damn gun contest, it, yeah, I was all about. If it. I was, if I was gonna run Apex, I might even look at running a twenty gauge. Well, that 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 a lot of guys do that. Damn. There, some Apex is probably like the top of the game, but you're going to pay for it. But they've got uh, there's people that run their 410 for turkey hunting. They're killing turkeys out to like 100 yards. Uh, no shit. <laughs> yeah. With a 410. With a 410. Oh, Which I mean, man. again, through eons of testing, everything else, the smaller you go, typically the better it patterns. So I'll be damned. You go down to it, especially if we're speaking about tungsten. You go down to a 20 gauge. It's going to pattern better further. Now, it doesn't have the power that a 12 gauge does, but if you're delivering, you know, more payload on target, it's going to be just as effective. The only downside of 20 gauges is if you run, especially if you run semi auto, better have a pretty good one. Because that, what people don't talk about, what's they probably don't shoot enough to know. Because, like, how many, especially target hunting, you're going to shoot a couple times. Because uh, all that tungsten and all the other heavier shots gotten real popular in turkey hunting. Well, predator hunting, especially if you have good fox country, you may, if you run a shotgun a lot, you may shoot that bitch a lot. And then one thing a lot of people don't do that I used to do a lot is practice a lot uh, with my shotgun, being fast, shoot them and everything else. What a lot of people don't talk about is that tungsten, it's more dense than lead, and it's harder on a shotgun. <laughs> we burn up a bunch of shotguns testing and shooting lots of tungsten shot loads. Oh, but then. So... When we swamped to 20 gauges, this was like back when we had phenomenal fox country. One, it's cheaper. Uh, two, it's way less, way easier on your shoulder. Three, it'll pattern better out further. But I started out with like cheap shotguns. A couple hundred rounds of, you know, some heavy tungsten shot. The bitches start falling apart. <laughs> but I mean, oh, as soon as I got a, I think it was a, it was either Benelli or Brett. I don't remember which one it was. Uh, that some bitch has got thousands of tungsten la- rounds down. And that's never hit a hedge. I mean, you got to keep it clean, obviously. But right. that tungsten shot, it, because it is more dense than lead, it's pretty rough on shotgun. <laughs> Which a lot of people don't talk about because they don't shoot them enough. Well, that's, I'm, I'm that guy. Thank God for guys like you because I, I don't know. I never patterned it. I never. I don't think I've ever patterned a shotgun. I ain't never. I take it out, and if it kills it, it kills yeah. it. If it don't, I, I'm just. I'm, I will never forget my first shotgun coat. Uh, it was probably October because it was a, a female with two younger pups. And I'm sitting around, you know, just about like we was talking about earlier, one of those perfect stands where you just had a little opening, wind's right, and, you know, weather's right, and I had all three of them coming in. And this was the first stand I ever carried a shotgun. All I knew was buck shot goes in shotgun. You point a shotgun and kill them. Yeah. And I shot all three of them some bitches, and every one of them run off. And I, I cussed that shotgun all the way back to the truck. And I'm like, this ain't worth the fuck. <laughs> yeah. And I, I called a, called a buddy that night. I'm like, 
Y'all use a shotgun for coyote hunting. This don't work, what the fuck? Like, all, I hit all of them. Uh, none of them died with inside. I mean, I didn't go look for them, but he's like, did you pattern? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and yeah. that's, that's what started me down that path of nerd, nerding out on his, like, you go out there, shoot a target. And- that's why I got a guy on my team <laughs> named Lynn Trader. He is my technical guru. Yeah. I mean, he is you made over. He's, I mean, he's got every load. He's yeah. got... Half his house is for loading, and he, you know he's he's that guy. And he goes talking about ballistic coefficients and all that bullshit. And I said, <laughs> I just look at him like an old retard. I'm, dude, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, man. Yeah. I put I put the bullet in. And, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, yesterday I took a a, a boy from a, a Decatur. His name. Uh, Bryce Elder, he's a pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. Me mm-hmm. and him, and he's a young boy and all that. But he's way, he's way, he knows all about his guns and all that. And he went, and I said, Bryce, I'm not that guy. <laughs> I said, <laughs> he went to ask me about my gun. Was well, this, 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 this one? Shit, I don't know. I it's, put the bullet in the gun, buddy. Got a trigger and barrel. <laughs> I said, I just, I, that's all I know. And, and uh, I said, hell, I. I don't clean my shit. I think the only time my gun's ever been clean was Wade Chandler did it. That's <laughs> the last time I did the vodka. Matter of fact, I should have brought my gun. Yeah, you should have. Yeah, yeah. Get so, you cleaning it. Yeah, because that's the last time it's been clean. God almighty. Yeah. Yeah, that somebody looks like you sow weed off of it right now. He was like, this is a brand new gun. Yeah, brand new. <laughs> I got mud all over it and dirt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Lynn, that's some gun. He loved that shit. Yeah. Oh, shotgunning can be fun, but it also be aggravating. Uh, but I mean, oh yeah, it can be. I shot that one coyote in that Throckmorton hunt that one time. Actually, no, I did good in the shotgun hunt because I had the Remington's. But then the next week, I thought, well, hell, that worked so good. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, I run out of the Remington, so I got some Federals, same shot and everything. <laughs> and I shot the coyote seven times. I had that ten shot tube on there. Shot it seven times. The first time I shot it from here to that damn door at seven yards and shot it seven times and still had to run over and stomp him, <laughs> chase him down, stomp him. And I was, oh, me, some bitch. Yeah. I had to throw them some bitches away. But I, I, uh, when we were scouting out there in, uh, in Nevada, I did shoot a coyote. I had some of them Federals that I bought up and I didn't want to waste the good shells. So I shot one at 80 and it killed it. So. Freaking who knows? Hell I, I, hell, I don't know. But but I know them tungsten. That not one coyote ever got up and left out of them. That'll put a yeah, hurting so, on them. So for $10, they're worth it. If you're, you know, if you're, you're serious, grand, you're not, you're not going to take that. But I mean, I patterned, I patterned my shotguns enough to where I knew what loads it liked in a, you know, with a good lead shot, you could be a good and effective 40, 50 yards. And every once in a while, you're going to get lucky and, you know, dispatch one with one shot at further ranges. But if you are serious about your shotgunning, you might as well get into tungsten because I promise you, it's a vast yeah, amount different. Torn. Yeah, and I, I'm surprised there ain't more people that selling that coyote load. It's, get, it's getting more readily available. Uh, and, and actually, heavy shot. Got bought out by one of the big companies. I don't remember which one it was. So the, it's come. There's ain't as high as what it used to be. But like, I think we were messing with it pre pre uh, COVID stuff. But right. like COVID, I don't have a good line on those components. COVID dried up, and I'm just like, we'll revisit this later on. But uh, hey, a lot of people just won't won't spend the money. <laughs> it's just. Yeah. It's, it's, Fucking expensive, I mean, but I mean, it just depends like how serious are you about shotgunning? If you're serious about shotgun, you go hunt a contest. I can see if you're just hunting for fun, being serious about shotgun, maybe not getting into it. But if you're going to hunt a contest and you're going to take it serious and there's money online. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta do a little homework, especially if, you know, of course not, you know, out here, you ain't going to use shotgun very much. You're a little wide open. But in our country, mm-hmm. there's places that we don't ever hunt because they're not they're not set up for rifle. Yeah. But you can get in there with that deal, so it opens up a whole lot more country. Yeah. And a good thing about when you hunt in that thick shit, coyotes come at you so much harder. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, because they got they that feel false more comfortable. Sense of, yeah, yep. they, yeah. I'd still. It's a it's 
It's a drain land. I still get it. We have enough here, other places to where it's thick. But after moving to the just running like an SBRAR with red dot, no, it, it ain't. It ain't like a shotgun. A little bit off. It's fine. Shotgun pattern. It's gonna knock it down. Right. You got to be on. But I just you know, SBR. 13, 14, 12, 10 inch barrels, whatever, AR with a suppressor on it and a red dot. It's way shorter than a shotgun. Way lighter. Well, way lighter than a shotgun with a suppressor on it. It's not lighter than a normal shot, you know, right. shotgun. But but I, what I like about that is it does require more practice to be proficient. Like it, the barrier to entry on a shotgun is much lower than picking up a rifle with a red dot. And being proficient on running codes, you know, shotgun, you got a pattern and everything else. But what I do like about it is we still, like a lot of our thick country, there will be pockets that go into the big open country. Uh-huh. Well, I can take that same rifle and throw an LPVO, like a one to six on it. So the one, the one X is going to be like a red dot six X. Now I can shoot that cow. It's 200 yards, 300 yards, whatever. If I have to, I don't prefer that because six X Starting to get a little hard for me to see that good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm starting one a little bit more at 6X. Oh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> on yeah. 250-yard count. But I just like the versatility of, because I still hunt alone a lot, of being able to watch extreme downwinds that we occur out here, but also being snugged up in that thick shit yeah. on that, you know, red dot LPVO situation. Uh, but as soon as... As soon as I started running that, uh, just for the length alone, like it's vast amount shorter than a shotgun. And you talking about being able to swing around easily in thick brush? That's where it's out for me. That's that's why I just and I used to be one of the biggest proponents for shotguns. I mean, had we sold TPH shotguns for a while? Uh, I don't I don't never carry a shotgun anymore. Even when I go hunt the thickest of shit, I just grab an AR short short AR. Right. It's very specific tool for the job to make it in my opinion, more handy than a shotgun, uh-huh. but it also requires a lot more practice to be like your barrier to entry to run a shotgun and thick shit is pretty small. You just go shoot a few times. You know where it's hitting. Yeah. Run with it. Yeah. You, <laughs> AR, you better practice. Yard, you, you suck if you can't yeah. shoot them there, but AR, you better practice, especially on running cows. And that that's t- tends what, what happens a lot in the brush is like, like you said, they're more aggressive because they're more comfortable when they're running. And they're, you know, it's also thick brush. Right. So you, a lot of times it's like, oh, you need to shoot. Boom. Well, shotgun, throw up and shoot. Uh, red dot AR, you might you aim a little bit more. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it requires more practice to be as proficient as you can get with a shotgun much easier. But it's also way less recoil and way less noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, sure. it's lots of, to me, the... Uh, the ARs want it. I don't can tell you last time I went cow hunting with a shotgun. But there's something about and I'm not trying to sway anybody in one way or another. There's something about blasting a cow with a shotgun that you, like I, you can load the nastiest, gnarliest rounds for an AR or whatever you want that'll blow shit up and it's great. Oh yeah. Something about shotgun and cow. It's very special. It, <laughs> Especially when it's fast and furious yes. too, because if you're setting up for a shotgun stand, that means it's going to be close. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you get a, you know, a good, especially like tungsten shot. It's going to hit like a ton of freaking bricks, especially close up. It's going to knock a shitload of fur off. And uh-huh. it's going to be this glorious. Th- it's moment. pretty dramatic. Yes. It's very, it's very much fun. Uh, and like I said, I'll never it's forget like bow hunting with, and <laughs> with, you you know, know, deer hunting. Yeah. When it comes to that. Yeah. yeah. It's a, I'll never forget my first successful coyote shotgun stand. I shot that son of a bitch nearly sniffing the barrel. And that was, I'm just, hell, I didn't even hunt with a rifle for a while after that. Cause I'm just like, I shotgun coyotes now. That's what I do. <laughs> you know, cause it was, it was just one of those freak deals where as a young stupid, like looking back on it, this is a young stupid pup didn't know any better. And it literally walked over a sand berm that I was sitting on and I just kind of leaned back. And by the time I leaned back, it was nearly touching the barrel. And I just pulled the fucking trigger. Boom. That's where you're laughing. Aren't you? I'm just like, oh yeah. Hell, I, the first first ant predator my my boy Dawson ever killed 
was with a shotgun. He was about nine years old, and I had a big, giant Remington 1100, you know, and <laughs> yeah. you know, 26 inch barrel on yeah. that son of a gun. He barely hold the son of a gun up. I had him over to my right, had to call her out in front of me in a salt skull, and we're sitting there. And I look over and I see him moving around. I'm, I'm fixing to chew his ass out about being still. And I was like, that dumb son of a bitch. And then all of a sudden I see him pull the gun up. Hell, there's a cat at the damn collar out in front of me at 25 yards. I went, oh shit. So I pull it up and I'll be damned if I don't shoot underneath the son of a bitch. Cat <laughs> runs off. So Dawson's leaned up and gets that uh, cut bank. Yeah, with that big giant building, that cat's running and rolls him at 55 yards. And old Dawson goes, Dad, you suck. <laughs> I said, yeah, I do, son. Yeah, I got that cat uh, mounted. He's up at my bunkhouse. But, yeah, that was the first one he ever did. But, yeah, that shotgun. I still got that shotgun. The old killed a bunch. But they'll, you know, back in the day, though, I was not a, until I found a shell that could yeah. actually kill yeah. Boy, I did not like it. I shot that cat one night at 10 yards, and some bitch run off. And me and Mitch damn near got in a fist fight over the son of a bitch. <laughs> we run off. <laughs> we found him next day, but yeah, yeah. get shotgun on. No it point. can. And there's another thing I don't like about shotguns is if you ever watch the like the loading process for the shotguns and the powders from them aren't that great. You can find a load for your shotgun that works really well, and just buy a shitload. And just literally hunting from like different weather changes is going to change how it basically expands on its pattern and everything else because it's moving at a different velocity oh, so man. that's that's been my only complaint about shock this is diving deep down into the rabbit hole and using it a shitload to like wonder why like uh, you know nine out of ten counts i shot with this at this yardage killed them immediately why on this day did it not do worth the shit at the same yardage and then i start going down that rabbit hole and it's like huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's amazing how over the years, shit, you know, we don't hardly hunt out of a high rack anymore at night. You know, we we get just on the ground. Just Yeah, we walk out there just like we would in the daytime, mm -hmm. get in the shadows of a tree. And, you know, used to, hell, we'd all drive right out in the middle of the wheat field and start making stand. Well, yeah, we don't. Yeah. We do. You know, we get tired at 2 o'clock in the morning. And it's been slow. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot easier to crawl up in that yeah. rack than to walk out there a quarter mile and make a stand. Yeah. But, but yeah, that that's another thing with the thermal. Sure helps big time. Yeah, you can you can crawl out there or put that collar out there in the wheat field and hide at the brush line mm -hmm. over on the side. I love yeah. that where you you can't do that. And the good thing about them uh, big tripods everybody's got now, and hell, I still use the old death grip but everybody i can't believe you use that piece of shit <laughs> i said damn dude i said all it is all i needed to do is hold yeah. my gun up i yeah. said i don't need it to give me a blow job i said <laughs> shit i mean everybody's getting spoiled nowadays I good equipment. Get, yeah uh, i was like yeah but you know they got them ball heads and all that and i got one of them but i don't have the deal underneath my guns and all that and i was like i don't really like being locked into something that way, because when I shoot a run shot, I like pull it up and free for it. You know, that's how mm -hmm. I shoot run. That's how I learn. I ain't got into, you know, if he turns this way, well, the, the tripod may be too high or too low. You don't have, but my guy's right. right here and he comes in and show. Yeah. And some guys are just damn good at it, but yeah. that's what they do all the time. Yeah. But I'm not the guy. That's why I like a death grip. <laughs> I can stick it some gun. All I got to do is sit it in there. That's yeah. all I want to do. And uh, I don't need to ratchet it down or anything like that. <laughs> but yeah, it was like, oh no, I can't believe you use that piece of shit. <laughs> what? Kill four hundred thirty of some bitches. All right, <laughs> damn. But, but I remember the first. Uh, you know, I used to never use shooting sticks. I, shit forever. I never used to shoot stick. It was always my knee or something. Matter of fact, I remember old Jeff Thomas had come with us. We was hunting a deal, and we were, he was filming. We were hunting as me and my boy, and we were filming. He goes, you don't have a, you don't have a shooting stick? <laughs> what the hell I need a shooting stick for? The coyote come running in, I'm boom, and I shot him. I'll be damned. I just cannot believe you don't use a shooting stick. And I, it just blew his mind. Well, then Kelly Jackson one time, he was giving me a hard time. Can't believe you don't use no goddamn shoot stick, and Mitch don't use. My partner don't use one. K 
Kelly bought me a guy named shoe, uh, some bog pots, just mm-hmm. two deal deal. The very first guy dang hunt, I sit up on top of that hill and the coyote's coming in. He gets like 60 yards moving to my left and I'm just about to shoot and that leg collapses on me and I shoot because I got a feather in yeah. the broom. And them them sticks are still sitting up on that hill in about five different pieces. That mother- <laughs> That's what them goddamn shooting sticks for. But now after I got used to them, you know, hell, yeah. they're, they are, they're handy as some bitch. But it's the same with that death grip. I like it. And all I got to do is hold my gun right in there and I pull it out when I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, and same with those, uh, all them deals that go up in them high racks and Cop Jager and, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, them deals. Those are pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. Hell, everybody's up making around right. those. Yeah, that's, that's handy. Handy. Like I said, yeah. you miss one nowadays out of a rack, you fucking suck. <laughs> I mean, I mean, because basically yeah. you've got it. That gun's up in there. Da, da, yep. da. It ain't like the old days where you got to get to the corner mm-hmm. and you, yeah. God damn, y'all be still. God damn, be, <laughs> be still. God damn, you know you're going. Oh, I still you, do. You're that. breathing. <laughs> damn it, you're breathing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, you've heard the conversation. Happen, oh yeah. And, and and if you miss, it's because you were yeah. moving. Yeah, I was just breathing. Well, that's what you got to got to hold your breath. God damn it. I mean, we have fought oh, over goddamn. that goddamn shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Get down on one day and see. Here's a, here's a funny story. I got this one big high dollar rack that that guys sponsored me years ago. First time we used it, we hunted the San Angelo. It's the first time I ever hunted San Angelo, and we hunted over here at Big Lake. And we got over there, and uh, well, we got in this rack. Well, from my ass to my feet, I'm a fucking midget. From my ass to my head, I'm a giant. And uh, so you know, most most of your Full-size pickups, I cannot drive because I cannot see below the dash. And, uh, I mean, I'll have to lean the pickup. T- my boy, my buddy's got a Tundra. I can't even get in it. And uh, so uh, that's why I'm a Chevy. I can get down in it some bit. And so so we get this rack, and we go up there and sit on it. Well, there's no way I can use it because the rail's down here, you know. I need it up here. And I was like, well, fuck, I can't even shoot that. So I had to run the light all goddamn night because – my buddies, it fit them perfect. Yeah. Well, me, I got goddamn it, get down here and get them back. Well, we hunted all that damn night, and then we made it to the way in, go to the way in down there. We're sitting there drinking a beer underneath that deal. And I got to look at that rack, and I said, kiss my ass. Hell, the goddamn it had pull deal. You could adjust the goddamn chair up and down. <laughs> well, kiss my ass. I got up there and put it down. I thought, this would have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> All night long, if I wanted to shoot that, get down in the corner on the knee. Yeah, the expanded metal, cutting in. Oh, the yeah. Knee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I'll be goddamn. that's when we learned about uh, trolling. I didn't, yeah. know what, I didn't know what the hell trolling was. We were having hell and couldn't get nothing. It was right there north Big Lake. And, and then uh, I was like, hey. Went in Rome, do as Roman does. I guess we'll troll. So we turned that goddamn collar on. We took off, and I had my two buddies. They were driving, and Jaime and Sandy Bob were in deal. Me and Lynn was up in the rack. I'm running that light. We ain't went a hundred yards. I go, I flashed the hood. There's a goddamn bobcat over here running just as hard he could to. We got the lights on every day. Yeah, runs to it. We shoot that cat. And I went, I'll be goddamn. We go on down there a little ways. Go about a mile. Another cat comes in. Boom, we shoot him. Here comes a cop. Boom, kid. they're chasing the goddamn pickup. Mm-hmm. I went, what the? F-? And then the last one cat we killed, we're going down a, an old field road, which is good. And we're coming across there, pretty good click, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And all of a sudden, I turn behind it. There's a cat plumb wore out, been chasing us for five miles. <laughs> hey, we shoot that son of a bitch 15 yards behind the, uh, the tail light yeah. of the damn pickup. And I blew my goddamn mind. Yeah, trolling. Yeah, I didn't even know what the hell it was, but it worked like it's saying. We've done it once or twice. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just the, I think we've done it once in a contest. Uh, big cat, obviously, but it was, was one of those nights where we was on big ranch and yeah. you just couldn't get a fucking eye. That's the way this was. And I'm just like, we we got two options to just troll around all night or go home. Yeah. <laughs> Things should happen. And we trolled. And Lily, we're just trolling. A lot of times, they'd just be laying out out there as fox country. Yeah. they just look up. We'd stop truck, kill them. We, we didn't actually have any um, chase the truck down. Oh, I can 100% see a cat. 
do that shit. It was blew my mind. They were all chasing us like a bunch. We killed five cats, killed five dogs. Well, I think we killed seven cows and five cats. But at midnight, we didn't have a damn thing in the pickup. And I said, yeah. well, let's do this. Yeah, it was crazy. You know, what was funny is uh, the two guys I hunted with, They he worked on a ranch over there. And the one guy did, and the other guy, but both of them are drunks. And I knew they both, yeah. And, you know, they drink their beer, and I told them when they asked me to hunt, I said, now listen, I take my goddamn hunting serious. I said, you can't be drinking. And I will just drink one. I said, I handle one. They ain't handle one. So we started trolling and hunted all goddamn night. And then when we got to back to the way in, in the back of my truck, there's beer cans everywhere. They and meant I go, one case. I go, hey. <laughs> Where did all them beer cans come? Well, we drank them. I said, God damn, I thought y'all told y'all no drinking. No. We said, we just drink one. Yeah, one. One at a time. We'll just drink one at a time. I said, well, you son of a bitch. Got you on technicality. I never, I never saw them two son bitches wiggle. Yeah. I mean, they... They're professionals. They, well, they drank two 30-packs. Oh, my two, Lord. Two 30-packs and never saw them wiggle. Oh, but, boy. That's professional right there. That is professional what drinking right talent. there. Well, <laughs> yeah. Hell, you want to wrap this up, Fitz? I know you're going to have to because I'm about to piss all over myself. <laughs> yeah. Same here. I have a call in 10 minutes, so I have to. Well, Clay, we appreciate you as always. It's always a blast to have you. Hell, on. yeah. I enjoyed it. Uh, are you having your contest this year? I am not. First time in Ooh. 25 years. All right. Anything else? Yeah, I'm over the drama. <laughs> Yeah. Well, as always, we appreciate you coming. And we'll see you guys next time. All right.